Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we move to Morris Island, South Carolina for the Second Battle of Fort Wagner on July 18, 1863. An anxious overall commander, General Gilmore, had spent the last week reinforcing the beachhead at Morris Island with siege guns and mortars in order to help take Fort Wagner. Union Brigadier General Truman A. Seymour, who was an assistant professor of drawing at West Point from 1850 to 1853, after having served gallantly in the Mexican-American War, was in charge of more than 5,200 men and six naval ironclads. Opposing him was Confederate Brigadier General William B. Taliaferro. One of his most famous roles was as the sheriff in charge of John Brown's execution in 1859. He commanded Fort Wagner's defenses, which comprised of 1,800 defenders. This included 1,620 infantry, 15 artillery crews, and a mortar crew. The winner today by huge margin, the Confederate States of America. The battle commenced on July 18th when Union Army was joined by six monitors from the U.S. Navy. For the following eight hours, the Union artillery and naval cannons bombarded Fort Wagner, forcing the Confederate defenders to retreat into their bomb shelter. Even with the hellish bombardment, the sandy walls of Fort Wagner absorbed a force of the artillery with very little damage. This meant that the Confederate defenders remained unharmed. Even with this result, Union General Gilmore ordered U.S. Brigadier General Truman A. Seymour to attack. Seymour selected the 650-man 54th Massachusetts, another all-black unit, and yes, the one you saw in 1989 with Morgan Freeman, Denzel Washington, and Matthew Broderick to be the lead brigade. Once again proven their bravery, the 54th charged ahead down a narrow beach while the Confederate artillery rained death down upon them. They were even able to reach the walls and engaged in bloody hand-to-hand -hand combat. The commander of the 54th, Union Colonel Robert Gould Shaw died in the assault. Contrary to the movie Glory, however, the battle did not end with that charge. Another nine regiments assaulted the Confederates and losses were so bad that another colonel, Union Colonel Haldeman S. Putnam, was killed during the battle, and Union Brigadier General George Crockett Strong was wounded at the battle, but would die later from tetanus from that wound in New York City. The Union pulled back, suffering a huge loss, and the Confederate soldiers continued to build up their defenses. The Union Army suffered heavily with at least 246 killed, 880 wounded, and more than 400 missing or captured for a total loss of at least 1,525 total casualties. Meanwhile, while losses were always horrible, the Confederate defenders only suffered 36 killed, 135 wounded, and 5 missing or captured for a total loss of 176 men. Please join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.